being a physicist isn't easy. You see, if someone reads that physicists have measured negative time, they expect me to know what that means. I have no idea, but I'd like to order minus 10 years, please. OK, but I know you won't let me get away with a silly joke, so I had a look at the paper. The paper comes from Ephraim Steinberg's group in Toronto. They measured photons, so the quanta of light, as they pass through a medium. To understand the business with the negative time, we first have to talk about what a photon is. You might think that a photon is a single wave, but that'd mean that it extends all through space. The photons that we use in the laboratory aren't like that. They are instead what we call a wave wave packet. That's a lot of individual waves with different wavelengths on top of each other so that they combine to a neat peak. The important thing is that even a single quantum of light contains different wavelengths. The next thing you need to know is that the velocity by which such a wave packet moves isn't necessarily the same as that by which the individual waves move. We measure the velocity of a single wave by how fast a crest or trough travels that's called the phase velocity. But if we're looking at a wave packet, we usually look at the velocity of the average called the group velocity. The group velocity can be slower or faster than the phase velocity. Indeed, the wave packet can even go into the opposite direction than the individual waves. This is called a negative group velocity. These differences between the phase velocity and the group velocity happen if the photon goes through a medium that affects different wavelengths differently. Now imagine you take a wave packet that goes into a medium and back out, but the medium distorts the package so that it amplifies the first half of the package and suppresses the second. It can then happen that actually the peak of the outgoing package appears before that of the ingoing package has disappeared. If you think of the wave packet as one big signal, that doesn't seem very remarkable. Okay, something weird is going on in that medium which distorts the package, whatever. But if you think that the wave packet describes one quantum of light, it now seems that the quantum came out of the medium before it went in. This is called a negative group delay or a negative time. And this is what the new paper is about. This negative time has been observed previously for light and also sound, but how it works at the quantum level, no one really understands. And this is what the new experiment now looked into. You see, if a quantum of light enters a medium, then it'll usually get temporarily absorbed by some atoms and then re-emitted. Just what happens can depend on the wavelength of the light, and in particular, it can shift the phase of the light. This is what leads to all these strange distortions of the wave packet. In this new experiment, they send photons into a cloud of rubidium atoms, which causes a negative group delay. By carefully tracking what the atoms do, they reconstructed the phases of the individual photons with and without the cloud. They find that the phases of the photons are shifted into the direction that they're traveling. It's a negative delay, like like you're pushing forward the photon. You can see in this figure that compared to the reference case, the shift doesn't just correspond to an immediate release, which would be zero delay, but actually to a negative time. In the abstract, they say that these results suggest that negative values taken by time, such as the group delay, have more physical significance than has generally been appreciated. Really? Well, first of all, this negative time has nothing to do with the passage of time. It's just a way to speak about how a bunch of photons travel through a medium and how their phases shift. Second, you can convince yourself mathematically that this so-called negative time or negative group delay doesn't lead to violations of causality and information still can't be sent faster than the speed of light in vacuum. It's one of those cases where something sounds really weird at first sight, but the more you think about it, the less weird it gets. 
None of this is to say that the experiment isn't interesting. Understanding how negative group delay works has a practical use. It's because signals that travel in optical fibers and other media can get distorted due to group delay. And you can correct for that by putting in modules with a negative group delay that restore the original signal. So this negative time experiment is a very interesting work but it'll not help you unwatch this video. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And there are adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Bina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.